That was Franz Joseph Haydn's Sonata in E-flat Major, Ob XVI 49. And you might have noticed that in the left hand, that was Alberti bass. In this video, I'm going to give you all of my tips and tricks to make Alberti bass sound good on the piano. Now, even if you haven't heard the term Alberti bass before, you might be familiar with the sound. It was a really popular accompaniment pattern that was used very often in the classical period. On the piano, we often see it in the left hand while the melody is playing in the right hand. Alberti bass was named for a composer called Domenico Alberti who used the pattern a lot in his music. It was utilized by most of the composers of the classical period, so Haydn, Beethoven, Mozart, all of those guys. Pattern consists of a broken chord with the notes organized in a specific way. So here we can see this example is a B flat major chord <clears throat> with a B flat on the bottom, a D in the middle, and an F on the top. Now to make this into an Alberti bass pattern, what we would do is we would just alternate the bottom note, the top note, the middle note, and the top note. And that's it. That's the Alberti bass pattern. Very simply, it sounds like this. And faster it sounds like this. And then in the context of a whole piece of music, it sounds like this. Now ideally, we want our Alberti bass pattern to sound really light. We want the Alberti bass pattern to follow the shape of the melody in the right hand, but to always be at a lower dynamic volume so that it doesn't overpower the melody. This is really challenging to do because there are a lot of notes in an Alberti bass pattern, oftentimes more notes than even in the melody. And so it's very easy with that amount of notes and with the technique required for our left hand to get really heavy and for the volume of that accompaniment pattern to overpower the melody. It's really common for Alberti bass to start to sound really uneven in the left hand and we don't want that. It can sometimes end up sounding a little bit lopsided rhythmically with the notes not being perfectly even. Another really common issue with Alberti bass is that the thumb will poke out. The thumb is one of our strongest fingers and so naturally when we're playing the thumb a lot in a repeated pattern, it's really easy to let that thumb get super loud and accented and we definitely don't want that. And other issues with Alberti bass are a little bit more specific because all of our fingers are different lengths. And because with Alberti bass patterns, we will generally be alternating between various patterns of white keys and black keys. It's easy for the physicality of playing the Alberti bass pattern to get in the way a little bit if we're not sure how to utilize our hand shape and some relaxation in our arm and our wrist to help play that Alberti bass pattern even. So let's talk about some ways to fix that. So the first thing that we want to make sure to do with an Alberti bass pattern is to tune in our ears. We first have to be able to hear, is there anything in the pattern that sounds uneven? And if so, what is it? This can be done by practicing really, really, really slowly. So I recommend turning your metronome to a super slow speed, maybe around 40, and playing your Alberti bass pattern and listening very carefully and watching your hand and just observing. Does anything poke out? Are any of the notes louder than the other notes? And is everything nice and even? Now, once you've done that, you might notice that certain notes are poking out or that some patterns feel a little bit awkward depending on where your hand is playing. So the next thing that we wanna do is we wanna make sure that we adjust our hand shape and that we're staying loose in our wrist. So whenever we are playing really chords in general, but especially broken chords in an Alberti bass pattern, we wanna make sure that we are playing with really rounded fingers. We wanna be on the very tip of our finger. And this can be especially challenging if we're playing an Alberti bass pattern that is on a chord like E flat major or F sharp major, where we have a lot of different patterns of black and white keys together. Our natural tendency when we get on the black keys can be to go really flat because we want as much of our finger to touch as much of the key as possible, but we don't wanna do this. You wanna keep your fingers nice and rounded as rounded as possible and make sure that you're playing on the fingertips. The other thing we wanna keep in mind when we're playing Alberti bass is we wanna play as close to the edge of the keys as possible. Because it can feel a little bit challenging to play these patterns sometimes, it's very natural to start to have our hand scoot towards the back of the keys and we don't want that. It might feel easier in the moment, but it's definitely gonna make it much harder to play later on. Now lastly, when we're thinking about the physical aspects of playing Alberti bass, we wanna make sure that we are staying nice and relaxed. 
When we're practicing something that is challenging or that might feel a little bit stressful, it's very easy to let tension creep into the body. And I actually have an entire video about relieving tension at the piano. You can check that out right there. But most importantly for Alberti Bass, we want to make sure that our shoulders are staying down, that we are continuing to breathe, and then that we're staying really nice and loose in our elbows and our wrists. This is super important because when we're playing Alberti Bass, generally the goal of the pattern is that it's going to be pretty fast eventually. And like I mentioned already, we're going to want that light even sound. And it's really hard to accomplish that if we leave all of the work up to our fingers by themselves. Our fingers don't have a lot of capabilities on their own. It's really the support of the entire entire arm and the elbow and the wrist that allows us to do really great things on the piano. So when we're doing our, our Alberti bass, we want to make sure that we're keeping our wrist super loose and that we are rotating. Do not allow your fingers to come off of the keys and work really hard like this. Do keep your fingers glued to the keys with as little movement in your actual fingers as possible and allow the rotation to come from the wrist and let that be the bulk of the movement when you're playing Alberti bass. So once we've taken a good look at the physical aspects of playing Alberti bass, and we've tuned our ears into what's happening when we're playing the Alberti bass, there are some other ideas that can be really helpful as well. One of the very first things that I recommend my students do with an Alberti bass pattern in their piece of music is to analyze what kind of patterns there are. So if you're not familiar with music theory and you're pretty new to piano, I would say look at the patterns and at the very least notice exactly where in the music the pattern changes. Oftentimes with Alberti bass, the composer will use Alberti bass for a little bit and then intersperse some other patterns and then change up the chord that they're using for the Alberti bass. So go through your music and take a little magnifying glass, not literally, but take a little magnifying glass and look at every single note and notice when is the pattern the same, when is it different. And once you know when it's the same and when it's different, see if you can take that a step further and notice how it's different. If you're not familiar with music theory, you might just look at how far away the notes are from each other or which note is changing between the patterns. If you are more advanced and you're used to the concept of chords, go ahead and analyze your chords. That is a hugely helpful thing to do with Alberti bass. Make sense of those notes in the pattern because as long as we're looking at Alberti bass and we're thinking about individual notes, it's gonna be really challenging to grasp the pattern as a whole and to ever be able to get some speed when we play it. But if we can start to apply some pattern recognition, we're gonna make sense of this Alberti bass a lot faster which will lead to better being able to play it. Now, while you're doing your analyzation, you also wanna make sure that you're using consistent fingering. If there's not fingering already written in your music, go through your pattern, play through it, and write in which fingers you're gonna use for these Alberti bass patterns. Often, you'll be using finger numbers one, three, and five. However, depending on the piece that you're using and exactly which chords, you might have one, two, four, and you might be alternating between the two. So write your fingering in and then stay consistent. Alberti bass is a really complex pattern and our brain is not gonna be able to comprehend it if every single time you play through it, you're changing the fingering. All right, once you've done all of that, you can utilize some very specific practice techniques. I'm gonna give you three ideas of ways to practice Alberti bass that will help create an, a more even sound and will ultimately help you gain speed. But these three practice techniques won't work unless you've done the previous things in the video. So make sure you do those. My first suggestion, and one of my favorite ways to practice Alberti bass, is to practice them in rhythms. And I have a whole nother video that explains exactly how to do the rhythm practice, and it goes into a lot more depth than I'm gonna go into in this video. So you can check it out right there if you wanna deep dive into rhythms, and I highly suggest that you do because it's basically the only practice technique that I have that almost works like magic. Usually when I have students practice in rhythms in their lesson, they are shocked and floored at how much better a passage will sound immediately after they practice it. And the concept of practicing in rhythms can really be used for a lot of different things in your music, not just Alberti bass. It can be used for really any fast passage or anything that you want to sound nice and even. So in order to practice in rhythms, what we do is we take our Alberti bass pattern and we ignore the rhythm completely, which sounds counterintuitive, but just stick with me. We turn on our metronome and we practice in a pattern of long, short, long, short, long, short, long. <laughs> And 
once we can do that accurately with all of the correct notes, and we've done it several times in a row, so it feels pretty comfortable, it should feel kind of easy, then we switch that rhythm and we turn on our metronome again and we do a pattern of short, long, short, long, short, long, short, long. <laughs> Once that feels easy and we can play through that rhythm really accurately, then we're gonna do a couple more rhythms. We're gonna try one triple it, one triple it. And then triple it, one triple it, one. Now, if you get through all of those rhythms, there's more rhythms that you can do with this for sure, but those are a really great start. And if you make it through all of those rhythms, then you're gonna start to inch your metronome up a little bit faster. So you're gonna go up maybe two more clicks or three more clicks, and you're gonna do that same process again. And then once that feels easy, you'll go up three more clicks and you'll do that same process again. When you're practicing in rhythms, don't practice a whole page at once. You're gonna practice maybe four measures at the very most, and you can do really small sections like one measure at a time. I promise you, if you practice this the correct way, it will work and you will be amazed at how smooth the pattern sounds, and you'll also gain a little bit of speed this way. Okay, so my second favorite practice technique for the Alberti bass pattern is to practice using the technique called flash practice. And I have a whole video that goes super in depth into flash practice, and I would really recommend that you watch it. You can check the whole flash practice video out here. It's a really great technique for anything that needs to sound even, anything that we ultimately want to play fast, and that's why it works really great for Alberti bass. And I'm gonna briefly explain it in this video. So in order to do flash practice, we take a really small section of our music, no more than a measure at a time, but it often works really well for even a half of a measure or a quarter of a measure. And what we do is we take the smallest string of notes. So we start with two notes and we play the first note very fast, short and light. And then we play the second note very heavy, accented. And we really essentially land on that note like this. <laughs> Once we've done that several times and it feels easy, then we do the same thing, but we use a string of three notes and we make sure that the last note, so that third note, is very accented and heavy, and the first two notes are very light and very fast, like this. Then we go on to the fourth note and we do the exact same thing. So that fourth note is very heavy, very accented. The first three notes are very light and very quick. And then we we can stop there or we can add a few more notes in that pattern but like i said we don't want to do more than a half or a full measure at a time now flash practice is really great because we're exaggerating the opposite we are really playing around with playing heavy and accented and we're giving each note a little bit of extra attention and that way when we bring it back up to tempo and we try to play quick and light all of those heavy accented notes have been kind of drilled into our muscle memory and it's a lot easier for our hand to remember how to do that all right my very last suggestion for practicing alberti bass is to practice the whole entire left hand with a metronome very light and staccato and with the overall shape that you want now we're gonna turn our metronome on to a painfully slow tempo, no faster than 40. And our goal here in playing through this Alberti bass pattern is gonna to be to make sure that we have the exact sound that we want. We want everything to be very even. We don't want any notes to be poking out. And we want the shape of the Alberti bass pattern to follow the melody shape, but to be much quieter than the melody. So we're gonna see if we can do that, maybe in smaller sections, maybe phrase by phrase, with the metronome at 40. And once we feel like we can play through a phrase really well, and it sounds exactly how we want it to sound, and we can stay with the metronome going at about 40 BPM, and we've done it several times in a row that way, then we're gonna go up to 44 or 45 with the metronome, and we're gonna do the exact same thing for that phrase. We're gonna make sure that we can play it exactly with the metronome, nice and even, all of the correct notes, like 98% accuracy, many times in a row, and then we're gonna go a little bit faster. You're gonna continue to repeat this process until you reach your goal tempo. And this process, while it takes a fair chunk of time, is so beneficial. You're gonna know this Alberti bass pattern significantly better after taking it so slow with the metronome and working it back up to tempo. I hope you found all of these pointers about Alberti bass helpful. If you did, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you can stay up to date with everything that I'm doing. If you have any questions, I would love to hear from you in the comments below, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>